All right, let's go over how to make a box that uses finger joints. It'll be cut out on our laser cutter. Again, this box is gonna be like the size of a pencil holder and you can make whatever size you want. You gotta pick a size over something. So let's just say this is gonna be three inches by three inches by four inches tall. And it's gonna have an open top on it this time. Again, we can do some more advanced stuff later on when we make a, a top that sits on, sits on top or a top that closes or things like that. But right now we just wanna kinda of go through the process of making these finger joints um, so we can make any types of boxes that we want. So again, I'm gonna start off like we did in other um, designs by just drawing some rectangles for our side. So we're gonna have, really we need three different pieces here because the front and the back are gonna be the same and our sides are gonna be the same. So we need to draw a front and back piece, a side side piece, and then a bottom piece to close it off. So let's draw a rectangle. Again, I like to, this is my technique, I like to put no outlines on things as I draw them and throw the outlines on at the end for my lasers to cut them. You can also, if you want to put an outline of 0 0.001 on now, that's completely fine too. Um, as I look down here, I can see, as I drew this, mine does have an outline of 0 0.001 on it. And since it's there, and I'm going to be a little bit lazy, I'll leave it this time. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle to represent the front. I'm going to draw another rectangle that represents the side and a third that represents the bottom for now. Let's say front is red, so the side is blue and the bottom can be green. All right, now, again, this is my technique, but it seems to work the best for me. So I just draw these and then I use the dimensions in Inkscape to resize them. Now we want our box to be three inches by three inches by four inches tall. And you can say, well, is that the inside dimension or the outside dimension? Is that how big you want the hole to be inside where the stuff goes? Or is that how big you want the outside to be? Again, whether you Want, whether that's your inside or outside dimension, it changes a little bit how we do our finger joints. So for this one, we're gonna I'm gonna we're gonna use that as our outside dimension. Um, maybe I can make another video or talk about later on what happens if you want that to be your inside dimension. How do you change up how you do your finger joints? So since it's our outside dimension, I'm gonna that's the size I want to make these um, these rectangles. So for the front, it's gonna be three inches wide by four inches tall. And for the sides, it's also going to be three inches wide by four inches tall. And you're going to actually see when we get through this that I don't really even need to do a side. I can actually take what I do for the front and copy it and do a couple little tricks on it. But for now, we'll just draw them that way. Now, our base, again, it depends on how you're going to make this base. If you want to just make a base that butts on, that's just a you glue to the bottom of it, you would just make the base three by three and it would just glue it to the bottom. If you want to put some taps in the base, though, where it goes in, you're also going to make it three by three, but then we're going to cut some tabs off at the end. So I'm going to make my base three by three to get started with. All right, I got my pieces. Now I can start making my tabs. And we're going to do it the same way as we made tabs with our shelf, where the thickness of our tabs and our slots, or whatever you want to call them, tabs and, I guess it'll be tabs and holes this time, tabs and slots, are going to be the thickness of our, our material we're going to make our box out of, and then the height where something we're going to choose for aesthetic reasons. So our thickness is going to be uh, 0.21 inches again. So I'm going to actually let's go point, I think 0.2 inches is the size of our material. So I'm just going to draw another rectangle. Remember, this is going to be uh, used as, this time as a spacer and as a slot. Um, just make it a different color so we can see it. And again, I want this to be 0.2. That's the thickness of our material. Now, when we choose how tall we want it, again, this is kind of for aesthetics. You could have like a lot of little tiny checkerboard finger joints. You could have one big finger joint. You could have something in between. And also just from, from preference of what I've done, I like to have an odd number of joints just so that uh, it's symmetrical. I also like to have, um, if you want the joints to the finger joints to be equal in size, you want to have a number that divides evenly into however big you make your um, your box. Otherwise, it won't divide evenly. You don't have to have them the same size. You can change up the size to make a different aesthetic type thing. So I'm gonna do, um, let's see, this is four inches tall. So we could do something like, so five doesn't go into four, so we could do five of them, seven does not, so that wouldn't be too good. Um, you could do, uh, I don't know, any other number divides evenly. If it doesn't divide perfectly evenly, that's fine too. There's with the tolerances that we cut with 
if it's off by a tiny little bit, it's not going to be a huge, huge deal. But since five does go evenly into four with as 0.8, it's a nice kind of even number. Let's do that. So I'm going to make this again. You could try to figure out the math, but if you don't like doing that, you could say, Hey, I want I want five finger joints. So I'm just going to make the height of my spacer here that represents my finger joint to be my total height divided by five. So just four divided by five. And actually this will do the math for you. And that's something we hopefully we can do in our head. But if you can, if it's a weird number or it's a little more tough to do in your head, Inksafe will actually do the math for you. Just type in the math you want or type in the fraction you want up here and it'll do it for you. Let's say I wanted seven finger joints. Actually, let's just do seven. Why not? I can type in four divided by seven. Now that's a kind of a weird number, but it'll do the math for you. So if we're going to use seven. So there's the first one. Now I want to copy this seven times, but I'm going to use my snap features over here to snap this and kind of just easily organize it for me as I go along. So I'm going to stick this one in the corner and I'm going to use duplicate control D and just slide it down and let him stick control D let him stick. And now I can actually cheat a little bit. I can highlight all three of these duplicate all three at once. It saves me a little bit of time copying. And we can go check. This should be, this should get us right down to the edge. Now, if I go in really close, it's going to be a tiny, tiny bit taller possibly because it might've rounded some of those because our, it probably rounded off this five, seven, one number a little bit. But again, if you zoom in and look, it's so close, it's not going to really matter. So there are, so we're basically just making that, that finger joint size and copying it all the way down the side of our thing. Now I'm going to color code these a little bit just so we can see them better. I'm going to kind of alternate color them so we can see which one is which on the screen. And now all I have to do is I can highlight them all, drag the mouse, highlight them all, control D, duplicate them. And I'm just going to copy them right to the other side, drag them over looks like, like a Harry Potter scarf and let it stick to that corner. And now you can probably see that I want to also put finger joints on this blue one. So I could just copy this whole entire side, this whole entire thing. As my other one, I already drew the blue rectangle. So I'm just going to copy these on So Control D duplicate again. So I want to use that same finger joint structure on the side and the front. All right, so now we got our, si our front and our side. Now the trick we're going to use, and again, it's not really a trick, but the idea we're going to use is that to make this match, we want these to have alternating joints. So where the front comes out, we want the side to be to have a cut in it. And where the front has a cut in it, we want the side to come out so that when you stick them together, they kind of match up like a puzzle. So what I'm going to do is, I want to have the top of mine come out in the front. So I'm going, because that's what I want to do. I want the top right here to come out. I'm going to delete the thing I want to come out. And then I just delete all the other ones of the same color. I kind of alternate and delete because remember these, these rectangles representing the holes I'm going to cut or the, the slots I'm going to cut for these finger joints. So I'm going to leave the yellow or the gold color ones here in the front piece. The red piece is the front piece. Those are going to get cut out and the other ones are going to stay. Now, if I want the side to fit together with it, I got to do the opposite. So I'm going to keep the maroon ones and delete the yellow ones for the side. And if you notice, if I take these and I was to put them together, they would fit together like a puzzle. That where the side is popping out, the front's going to have a cut. So those all slot together nicely and you'll have a jointed box using finger joints. And again, hopefully you can see if I had five of them, I just have a different number of things going down the pattern. And you can make this pattern whatever you want. You could do a small, then a big, then a small, then a big. You could do a small, small, then a big in the middle, then a small, small. So the pattern you make with your finger joints is up to you. It's up to your creativity. It's just the idea is you make a pattern that fills the entire side. You then copy it to the, if you, if you make that pattern in the front, you then copy it to the side. And then you alternate which ones you keep and which ones you get rid of. So in this case, like I said, all these, let's actually make them a different color so we can see a little better what they'll look like. Make them like white or something. These are going to be the ones that get cut out on our machine. So our piece is going to look like that when they're done. All right. So now we got, I mean, we're actually almost done. We have the, the front and the back. We have the two sides. Now, if you were actually making this, you want to put logos on it, you could 
what I would do before you make this, you're going to duplicate the entire thing. Now well, I'm going to delete this in a second because we still haven't done one part. We got to still we're at the bottom, but you would duplicate the entire thing and you could put logo, different logos in the sides, something different on the front and the back on the side. So you could put whatever designs you want to put some, um, I don't know, like some dragon scale or something on the sides of it and then the front and back. So like it's a box made out of dragon scale or chain mail or whatever you want to put on it. So you would copy them and you can then modify them after the fact, but you really just need to make the front because the back's exactly the same. Make one side because the other side is also exactly the same. But now the last thing we got to do, again, if I wanted to just glue the box on the bottom, this box, you notice it fits nicely there, fits nicely there. I would put my box together, just glue this square onto the bottom and I'd be done. But we want to be a little more, um, want to engineer it a little bit better so it sticks a little bit better. So we're gonna, I want to put some slots into this as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing I did on the sides, but just do it on the bottom. So I'm going to come in here. Let's, I'm going to start with my piece up top. Why did that not work? There we go. Um, I don't know. Let's make this purple. Sure. I'm going to draw a slot. So this one, again, I want it to be the thickness of my material. So it's going to be 0.2. And I want to make this, let's say, a half an inch. I just want a little tab on each side to help me glue and give me some extra support. Now this time I want this one to be right in the center of this. So I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my align tools. I'm going to click the front piece, click the new, the new um, hole, center them, and then also match up their bottom. So I'm going to use this button here. It says align bottom edges and pop it right there because that's exactly where I want it. Now I'm going to duplicate it. Bring it over to the blue one and do the same. And actually, if you notice, I had my snaps on, it'll snap right to the middle for us. So that's another way if you have the correct snaps on, it'll snap dead center in the middle of this. But let's say it's not there. Can't even get it to not do that. Again, I would pick the blue, pick the magenta, center it, and then align the bottom edges. So that gives me my, um, my slots. Now I have to create the tabs on the other one. So I'm going to duplicate my slot again bring it down to the green one, do the same deal. I'm going to center it and I'm going to align the edges. But now remember I want to, so here I want to remove material on these. So for example, these are going to become cut out. I want to remove material there. That means on the bottom, I want to actually keep the material there and remove the material around it. Cause I want this to now slide into the bottom of it. I don't want it to just be flat on the bottom. I want it to slide up into it. So I actually need to remove this material over here. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to keep use my snap and just draw another. Actually, I'll cheat and duplicate this. Just change its color so we can see it. I'm going to bring it here, let it snap to the corner. Or snap to the middle, doesn't really matter. Snap to there. Drag the corner. Snap to that edge. Come on. There we go. And now that's exactly the size I need. And again, I didn't have to measure anything. didn't have to do any math. I just used the snap functions in Inkscape to do that for me. Now that I have that, I'm going to duplicate it and put one on the other side. And now I can just actually duplicate the whole thing. Again, I just deselect it, selected all three of them. Duplicate. Let's put one on the bottom. These are going to be the same that are on the sides as well. So I'm going to duplicate it one more time. Now this is where you got to be a little bit tricky. If I try to rotate it, it's going to rotate all the pieces individually. That's not what I want. So the cheat is you, you can either group them or if you don't want to group them, Click on it one more time, bring up the kind of rotational little handles there and then rotate it this way. And I'm holding down control. So it snaps to like the main degree. I think it snaps to every 22 and a half degrees or 12 and a half, something like that. 15 degrees, I think it snaps to. So I can get it to be 90 degrees. So that way is the kind of easiest way. Now I can just drag this into the corner, let it snap up there Not in the right spot. Yeah, and I'll duplicate it one more time, bring it over there. And now I have my layout. And now the last thing is, again, I want to keep the pink parts. So I'll select those and get rid of those. And I want to cut out these uh, purple parts. And I'll select them and just make them white for now. So we can see what it will look like, just to make sure it works. And then as this goes, as this is put together, this will slot fit into there. The side ones will fit into there and we'll have our box will put together nicely as a puzzle. Now, 
at this point, you could actually leave it like this and cut it out and it would work fine. Sometimes you might want to remove the material for these little slots. I like to keep them just because in case I made a mistake or say I want to use this design for a different thickness of wood, I want to go back and change all these slot sizes. If I do the, if I kind of highlight them and do the path difference, I can't get, I can't change your size anymore. They're gone. They're, this is now a kind of a set size. So I want to, I use them this way so that when I'm, if, if I need to change them, I can go back in and change them. So I'll keep them. One thing I do want to modify possibly would be these down here because they're going to cut over them twice, but it honestly doesn't matter. It's not going to mess up with where this double cut's going to be. Isn't really near anything you're going to see. So if there's a little burning because of double cuts here, it's not going to be a big deal. So I'm going to keep them all the way that they are. Now our last step, again, you can, at this point, while we're, our design is done, you might, if you want to add some features, some um, artistic design elements to it, some picked images on the sides, you're going to etch in. You could do that. Sometimes you could add a pattern that you cut holes out, do whatever you want to to it. But our structural design is done. So before we go and actually go out and create this, what we have to do is, let's see, will these fit on the bottom? We need to, we only got two sides. We need two more. So I'm going to duplicate. Actually, I'm not going to duplicate them yet. Let me undo that. Um, before we finish this off, I want to highlight these again. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to make them all white. Well, I'm going to keep them gray. I'll keep them colored just so you guys can see them. But remember, if you're going to, if you were going to create this and you had any etching, you want to make sure you don't color them. You, if you're turning them back to white, if you were just cutting stuff out and you're keeping it kind of plain, and you're not etching anything. You can actually keep them colored to see them better. And when we go and cut them, just turn on vector cutting and it won't do any of the etching and the colors don't matter then. But what I definitely want to do at this point is go in and check my um, the thicknesses of all of my lines. So I want to make sure that there are cut settings. So I'm going to highlight it, everything control shift F it's already opened up, but it's over here anyways. Um, I'm going to go to stroke paint. They all have it turned on, but I'm going to stroke style and they're all different right now. So that's why it gives me this weird hundred percent thing. I'm going to switch that to inches and make sure they're all 0 0.001 in size. And again, it's always good even to go back and just click on a couple and make sure that it worked. And remember, don't rely on this, rely on the number down here in the corner, because this rounds to three uh, decimal places. This one down here goes farther and it has to be exactly 0 0.001 inches or the machine will not, does not know to cut. So I'll click on this, got a nice 0 0.001, click on this one, got a 0 0.001. Let's click on one, a couple of the holes, 0 0.001, looks good, looks good. Because remember, when you resize things, it also changes the thickness of the lines. Like for example, if I grab this and make it bigger, the thickness of the line just went to 0 0.002. So that's why they're not all, even though we started at 0 0.001, they can change. But now we're looking good. We just have to copy this. I'm going to bring it down here because it'll fit on our machine. Snap off. And we are good to go. We got our front, back, two sides, and a base and our little box is done. And we can use this technique of drawing the slot size and creating a pattern, just using it and alternating it back and forth and back and forth to make any type of kind of box type thing.